And there are, there are several key mind manipulation techniques which um, are very, very powerful uh, propaganda tools. The most effective and the most powerful, and it's used on us all the time, is something I call problem reaction solution. It's a cracker, this one. It's a mind manipulation technique that avoids not only opposition to what is the goal of the manipulators, it actually manipulates people to demand they do what they want to do anyway. And it's happening all the time. I, once you see this technique and how it works, you watch the news and read the newspapers in a completely different light because you start to see it happening. It works like this. You start by secretly creating a problem in the world and making sure someone else is blamed for it in the public uh, arena, in the public mind. It could be a run on a currency, it could be a government collapse. At its most extreme, it could be a war because the two world wars in this century were funded, all sides were funded by the same people. Provable. The same people that funded the Allies in the Second World War and funded uh, the Soviet Union also funded Hitler. Why would they do that? Why would someone want to fund all sides in a war? What is good is a war? Well, first of all, on one level, it makes vast amounts of money if you're lending money to all sides and you're also um, selling them lots of arms and all that stuff. But the fundamental reason for a war is to change the nature of post-war society. And what we saw in the First World War and the Second World War were massive global examples of problem-reaction-solution, which worked like this. The problems created secretly. You then use the media, which isn't difficult, to wind up public opinion in relation to your manufactured problem to the point where public opinion utters the classic words, something must be done, this can't go on, which is always, always followed by, give my power away, what are they going to do about it? And at that point, those who created the problem and got someone else to be blamed for it, wound up that public reaction, then openly, in the public arena, in the parliaments of the world, uh, on the, in the newspapers and on the television, offer the solutions to the problems they have created. And in doing so, they get vast numbers of people to demand what they want to do anyway. Uh, for instance, if, um, if you want more cameras in the streets, crikey, they're going up all over the place in Britain. If you want more cameras in the streets, you want a more armed police force, you want more authoritarian laws, greater erosions of freedom, and you want the public to demand you do it, then get the public frightened of crime. Either let um, society break down so there is more crime, or emphasize crime to be worse than it really is in some areas. Get people frightened, and the first thing people do when they're in fear about something is they look for someone out there to protect them from what they're frightened of. So, get people frightened that they're going to be burgled, get people frightened they're going to be mugged in the street, and they'll demand you take the freedoms away. They'll demand cameras in the streets and more authoritarian laws.